Hello and welcome to the channel. This is Dark Silence and yeah, I decided to do a voiceover this time due to your requests. Nevertheless, let's jump direct into the story. Rabies. It is exceptionally common, but people just don't run into the animals that carry it often, skunk especially and bats. Let me paint you a picture. You go camping and at the midday you decide to take a nap in a nice little hammock. While sleeping, a tiny brown bat in the raged state of infection is fidgeting in broad daylight, uncomfortable and thirsty due to the hydrophobia, and you snort, startling him, he goes into attack mode, except you're asleep, and his little brown bats of weight around 6 gram, you don't even feel him land on your bare knee, and he starts to bite, his teeth are tiny, hardly enough to even break the skin, but he does manage to give you the equivalent of a tiny scrape that goes completely unnoticed. Rabies do not travel in your blood. In fact, a blood test won't even tell you if you got it. Antibody tests might be done but are useless if you're ever being vaccinated. You wake up, none the wiser. If you notice anything at the bite site at all, you're soon you just slightly scraped on something. The bomb has been lit and your nervous system is the weak. The rabies will multiply along your nervous system doing virtually no damage and completely undetectable. You literally have no symptoms. It may be a couple of days, it may be a year, but the camping trip is most likely long forgotten. Then one day your back start to eek or maybe you get a slightly headache at this point you are already dead there is no cure the sole cavity to this is the milwaukee protocol which leaves most patients dead anyway and the survivors mentally disabled and it's seldom done there is no treatment it has a hundred percent kill rate absorb that not a single other virus on the planet has a 100% kill rate, only rabies. And once you're symptomatic, it's over, you're gone. So, what does it look like? Your headache turns into a fever and a general feeling of being unwell. You're fidgety, uncomfortable and scared as the virus that has taken its time getting into your brain finds a vast network of nerve ending. It's being to rapidly reproduce, starting at the base of your brain, where your pons is located. This is the part of the brain that controls communication between the rest of the brain and body, as well as sleepy cycles. Next, you become anxious you still think you have only a mild fever, but suddenly you find yourself becoming scared, even horrified, and it doesn't occur to you that you don't know why. This is because the rabies is chewing up your amygdala. As your cerebellum becomes hot with the virus, you begin to lose muscle coordination and balance. You think maybe it's a good idea to go to the doctor now. But assuming a doctor is smart enough to even run the test necessary in the few days you have left on the planet, odds are they only be able to tell your loved ones what you died of later. You're twitchy, shaking and scared. You have the normal fear of not knowing what's going on. But with the virus really messing up your amygdala, this is amplified a hundredfold. It's around this time the hydrophobia starts. You're horribly thirsty. You just want water, but you can't drink. Every time you do, you throw it clamps shut and you vomit. This has become a legitimate active fear of water. You're thirsty, 
but looking at the glass of water begins to make you gag and shy back in fear. The contradiction is hard for your hot brain to see at this point. By now the doctor will have to put you on IV to keep you hydrated. But even that is futile. You were dead the second you had a headache. You begin hearing things or not hearing at all. You taste sounds, you see smell. Everything starts feeling like the most horrifying acid trip anyone has ever been on. With your hippocampus long under attack, you're having trouble remembering things, especially family. You're alone, hallucinating, thirsty, confused and absolutely undeniably terrified. Everything scares the literal shit out of you at this point. These strange people in lab coat, these strange people standing around your bed crying who keep trying to get you drink something. And it's only been about two weeks since that little headache that you completely forgotten. Time means nothing to you anymore. Eventually, you slip into the dumb baby face. Your brain has started the process of shutting down. Too much of it has been turned into the liquid virus. Your face drops, you draw. You're all but unaware of what's around you. A sudden noise or light might startle you, but for the most part, it's all you can do to just stare at the ground. You haven't really sleep for about 72 hours. Then, then you die. Always, you die. Then there's the question of what to do with the corpse. I mean, sure, burying it is the right thing to do. But the virus can survive in a corpse for a year. You could kill every rabbit animal on the planet today. And if two years from now, some moist, preserved, rotten hunk of used-to-be brain gets eaten by an animal, it starts all over. So, in conclusion, rabies are scary. Thank you for watching. See you next time.